painting of the crucifixion behind me. And uh, I just thought, you know, when John was on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter 4, he says, uh, I saw a door open in heaven. And the door open in heaven is nothing but the crucified Christ. Because in John chapter 10, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. I am the door. So the night the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, he opened the door. Because Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 through 20 says, We can now boldly come to the most holy place through the flesh which is the veil. So the veil wasn't the one in the temple. The thing that prevented us from going to the Holy of Holies was the body of Jesus Christ. So when his body was torn on the cross, it became the door. So we got to go through the crucified Christ to get into the holy places of the Almighty God. And John says, immediately as I was in the Spirit, and as I went through this door, I saw a throne. And in the midst of a throne, a lamb as it was slain. Then he goes on to say, and the voice that was speaking to me and the angel said, come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me on a high mountain and he showed me a city adorned, prepared as a bride for a husband. And he said, the tabernacle of God is now with men. Okay. So when I went through this crucified Christ, which was the door, he said, come, I'll show you the one that is united with this man, Jesus Christ, which we call the church, the bride. And he showed me what the bride looks like. It's a city that's on a hill. And it says, and this city has no need of the sun or the moon because the lamb is the light thereof. Okay, so Jesus Christ came, John 1 verse 9, to enlighten our lamps, and he was the light of the world, and now since he's departed, we are now the light of the world. Matthew 5 14 says, you are the light of the world, you are the city that sits on a mountain, and it says you cannot be hidden. Verse 16 says, so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So church, if you truly want to be the church, you've got to realize you are on a mountain. If you're not on this mountain, you better get there quickly. And on this mountain, you are the light. On this ma light mountain, you are the city of God. You are the true Zion of God. Matthew 21 says, The stone that the boulders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and there will be a stone laid in Zion, and upon him shall the people hope. You are Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. So the church is called Zion. It's called a mountain. It's called a city. It's called a light. It's called a bride. It's called a wife. The city of God is the place where people will run to to find refuge for their souls which is nothing else but you and I which are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ okay so in first Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 Paul says if I tarry to come I want you to know how you should behave yourself in the house of God which is the church of the living God so God's house is the church this is where God dwells. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that God dwells in you? So we are the temple. We are the house. We are the city. We are the mountain. We are the light. Man, we are such an encompassing group of people on the face of the earth. We are dangerous for the kingdom of darkness. All right? So we are that city, we are that mountain, we are there. So let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 2 and say this is God's holy word, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and the way the Holy Spirit anointed people to write, so it'll be upon the preacher to preach and upon me to hear. I am not deaf, I am not blind, I will see. Spirit of revelation, seeing, knowing, and hearing is upon the house upon the channel, wherever this word goes out tonight, we will see and we will hear in Jesus' name. Is that right? So I can go on quoting scriptures, but I think you trust know what we're going to talk about. And Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, 21, 22 says, uh, you are being built to be the holy temple of God. Every single one of us are being built to be a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
Is that right? It says, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but over you the glory of the Lord shall shine, and people shall come to the shining of your light. And they will say of you, behold, Zion, the city of the Lord. Okay, so as soon as Christians realize we are the light, we are the mountain, we are the city, we can't be hidden. As soon as we realize there's a mountain top place for you and not a valley place. God is not prepared for the church to dwell in the valley. Oh, brother, though I go through the valley. He didn't say when you dwell in the valley, he said when you go through the valley. I think it's time to go through the thing and get on top of the mountain. God has planned for the church to be a mountain top people. God has not planned for you to live in defeat and be in the valley down below. Okay, so I'm not a valley preacher. I'm a mountain preacher. Okay, because Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. He said we are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. We are supposed to be the head and not the tail. We are supposed to be above only. And not be beneath. Beneath is down in the valley. On top, you know, and above is right there on top of the mountain. So people of God, realize you are something. With all that in mind, Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 2, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Many people shall go and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go for the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The mountain, the city, the light, shine. Okay. Zion, Jerusalem. And all people shall flow to this mountain, this light, this city, this place, Jerusalem. This is a promise. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and seek His face. Okay. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and celebrate Do you want to go to that mountain? Second yes. Peter chapter 1. Verse 3 says, According as his divine power. Everybody says his divine power. So this is not just some gooby gooby, you know, flickering shadow of power. This is God's divine power. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Would you say his divine power has given us all things? Come on, work with. His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So if you realize who you are in Christ, everything that God could do to make you have life and have you being godly has already been given you by His divine power. I mean, where will you get greater power? Where will you get a greater promise? Hmm? Right? Verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Okay, so I hope you realize I did write on the board promise, and the promise there that at, this, at the last days, there will be a mountain of the Lord. And it, this mountain will be exalted above all other mountains. And all nations shall flow to this mountain, which is called Zion. Now, we know according to Matthew 21, I quoted it according to Psalm 118, Isaiah 28, 1 Peter chapter 2, that there's a group of people which is called Zion, the mountain of the Lord, the city of God, the bride of the Lamb, which is nothing else but the church of Jesus Christ. It's not an ethnical group. It's not a geographical country. It's not a city somewhere that you can locate. It's a spiritual place. You've got to discern and you've got to take spiritual stuff and compare it with spiritual stuff. We know the saying, if you want to talk about apples, you must compare apples with apples. If you want to talk about parents, you must compare pairs with pairs, you know. But we come to the church and they always want to take the natural and bring it into the spiritual. Verse 10 says, 
Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Listen to verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Entrance into the everlasting. We're going to come to it later on, the unshakable kingdom. Verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, novels, when we made known unto you the power. Now remember the power has given us all things that pertain to life. When we made known unto you the power, when we made unto you known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God, Jesus Christ, the Father, honor and glory, when they came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. When we were with him in the holy mountain. Okay. Peter says, when we were on the mountain, dear father. We heard the voice, and this is not a fable. It's the power of God. Verse 19 says, but we have also a more sure word of prophecy. There's a promise for the last days. That there will be a group of people that will be called the mountain of the Lord. And those people will see a flow of people coming to them to find help, shelter, healing, deliverance. Those people will be a shining light in a dark place. Those people will not be able to be hidden. They will be the people that people will run to and say, we can see that the Lord is with you. You are Zion. Hmm? So, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. The Bible says you've got to compare spiritual with spiritual. You can't compare the natural with the spiritual. No, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Not man made ideas, but moved by the Holy Spirit. The word star there is the only one in the Bible that differs from all the other words star in the Bible. The word star is in the New Testament, I think, 24 times. And except for Jesus being born where it says we saw a star in the east, all the other stars are referring to people. I saw a star fall from heaven. But when we get to this one where he says, if we hold fast to the word of prophecy and don't have our own personal interpretation, but we take the spiritual, compare it with spiritual, the day will dawn where the day star will arise in our hearts. Now we know Paul prays that Christ may be formed in us. We know that we will be changed into the very image of Christ. We know that we will grow into the stature of the Christ. Okay, so we saw a star. You know, and this is what Balaam prophesied in Numbers 24. He says, I see a star, not now. It's still afar off, but I see him coming. You know, prophesying about Jesus Christ. Revelation 21, Revelation 1, Revelation 2, Revelation 3. Jesus Christ says, I am the bright morning star. Here he comes and he says, there's going to come a day when we take the word of prophecy as it's in the Bible, where this day star will arise in our hearts. In other words, we will shine as bright as he's shining. We will be able to do as he's doing. Now, you know, a star is a sun. Every star we see is a sun. So every star is a ball of fire. 
But you have cold stars and warm stars. The blue ones are very hot and the red ones are very cold, but they're still hot. Okay? You understand? It's still a ball of fire. So the Bible says in Malachi 4, 2, that the, 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 the son of righteousness, you can just as well say the star of righteousness, because the sun is a star. The star of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. So the son of righteousness, which is a star, has healing in his wings. So I just thought, he that dwells in the secret place, which is on the mountain, will dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the wings of the Almighty, we will find shelter and protection. I just thought, you know, there he shall give his angels charge over thee, that you will not dash your foot against the stone, the stone being the law. Okay, so there is more victory for the church of Jesus Christ. So the son of righteousness will not only have wings over us, it will also rise in our hearts. So how will, it, how will it happen? There's got to be a supernatural unison of contact. In John chapter 17, Jesus says, Father, the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they will be one with us as we are, I with you and you with me. That will be me and them and them in us and us and you and you and us, a supernatural unity of the Spirit. I've given them your glory. What is glory? Glory is the shining of God's light. 1 Corinthians 15 says, one star differing glory from another star. Okay, and it says, as we have borne the image of the earthy, we will now bear the image of the heavenly. Okay, we saw a star in the east. And when the star stopped, we knew that the king was born. So this king is there to make us kings. Because he wants to be the king of the kings. This one who is called Lord wants to make us lords because he wants to be the Lord of lords, okay? This sun wants us to be the suns to shine brighter, okay? Come on, man. Matthew 14 verse 43 says, the righteous shall shine as the sun, okay? And another translation says, the righteous shall shine as stars. Daniel 12 verse 3 says, the righteous shall shine as stars, Okay, so the day star will arise. So how will this unity come? How will this glory come? And here is the word that's the only different word for star in the whole Bible. The Greek word is phosphorus. If I have a piece of phosphor, it can be very dangerous. But if I have something that is phosphorus, in other words, it's contaminated with phosphor. That's why it's phosphorus. So if I take a phosphorus thing and rub myself with it, wherever it touched me, that place becomes phosphorus. So if I am in the dark, my hands will become glowing in the dark. The day star, the phosphorus side of God. If I get contaminated, <laughs> Not a good word. The more I get in touch with Jesus, the more I am like Him. The morning star, the phosphorus of God rises on the inside of me. In other words, the light He has becomes my light. The glory that He has becomes my glory. His shining becomes my shining. Whoa! And 2 Corinthians 3, 18, I'm changed from the glory of the old to the glory of the new into the very image of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I pray that Christ may be formed in you. Good stuff. So Acts chapter 3, Peter and John came to the gate called Beautiful and there was this lame man sitting since birth, you know, begging there. And Peter said, you know, we haven't got silver and gold. We've been to spirit word and they just took up an offering. But, you know, what we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Work. They took him by the hand, raised him up, his ankle bones received strength, and he started jumping and leaping and praising God in Solomon's porch in the temple. And the Pharisees called him and said, hey, by which power? By which authority? In what name did you do this? Let it be known unto you that by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this man is healed, whom is now standing in front of you. Bible says, and they decided what they're going to do with them. And when they discussed, they took notice that they had been with Jesus. They noticed and took notice that these guys have been with Jesus. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and seek his face. Jesus, phosphorus, touch, glow in the dark. What we have, we give you. 
Oh, they took notice that they've been with Jesus. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and seek his face. When, when John saw the church and Jesus in the midst of the church, he saw the church as seven golden lamp stands. Not lamps. Lamp stands. It's in all the Bibles. They were lamp stands. But when he went into the most holy place, he saw in front of the throne seven lamps, which was the seven spirits of God. And he said to the seven lamp stands, which were outside the holy place, he said, come up higher so that the lamps and the lamp stands can be united. So he says, and I have in my hand the seven lamps and the seven stars. The seven stars are the messengers. The seven lamps are the spirits of God. The lamp stands the church. Can we get the stuff lit up? Can we get the light to shine? Come up higher. John, you're down in the valley. Come up. Let's go to the mountain. Okay. And then he says, till the morning star rises in your heart. And he says, and he that overcome, I will give him the morning star. Okay, 2 Peter, we're still in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. That one day with God is just as good as thousand years. Thousand years with God is as good as one day. In other words, God says, I'm in a place where time is no more. So if I step into eternity, if I go to the mountain, I lose track of time. I come, I come out, whew, I, I started praying two o'clock it's 7 p.m. What happened? Where was I? Other people come and say, hey, man, I can't pray for 10 minutes. I get tired quickly. It's because you pray in the valley. You pray all your problems, all your situations. You keep on seeing the mess you are in. In the midst of it all, you're supposed to be more than a conqueror. Hmm? He came from heaven to earth to take you from earth to heaven. As we bore the image of the earthy, it's now time to bear the image of the heavenly. You are supposed to be seated in heaven with Christ Jesus right now. If this is true, and it is, we have just entered the 7,000th year. Since the creation we know. If there were creations before, we don't. We just speak about the one that we know in the Bible. If there's billions of trillions of years, good. But our creation is 7,000 years. Mm -hmm. We are creationists, not evolutionists. In other words, we just entered the seventh day. We entered the seventh day Eight seconds ago. Right. It's 2008. Okay. We've just entered the seventh day. You got that. If it's true, and we believe it is, that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ lived on the face of this earth, was crucified and risen again. Then two days is gone and we just entered the third day. Okay? So we have just entered the seventh day since creation, the third day since crucifixion and resurrection. With that in mind, 1 Peter 2 verse 13. Verse 5. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. It is contained in the scriptures, not in the news magazine, 
not at BBC, CNN, you know, not at Euronews or, you know, National Geographic or History Channel or Russia Today or SABC News. This is contained in Scripture. So we compare the word with the word. It's contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion. Everyone says Zion is a mountain. A chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Now that is in scripture about 12 times, so it's a lot of scriptures to confirm that, you know. Unto you therefore which believe is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same has become the head of the corner. Now the builders there refer to Israel, the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. The Bible says they stumble. Jews stumble and Greeks find it hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Verse 9. But you. But you. But you. Are a chosen generation. Take note of that. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's the light. He's the sun. He's phosphorus. He has called you out of darkness into his Marvelous light. What is the light? Jesus Christ, I am the light. He has called you if any man is in Christ. He's a new creation. Verse 10. Which in time past were not a people. So he's not talking to Israel. Because he's talking to people that were not God's people. But you are now the people of God. You have not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. You were not God's people. Now you are God's people. These people who were not that now are, they are a holy nation. They are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Royal meaning king. Priesthood. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, when John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, you know, he said to him, he has washed us in his blood and made us. So the washing of the blood made us something and made us kings and priests to rule on earth. Mm. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. He has washed us in his blood to make us kings and priests to rule on earth. Can I help you? Sometimes it's good to know some of the Greek stuff. I don't know. I study the stuff to, to give it to you. There's some of the stuff, if you look at it in the original languages, you get some more light on it. Revelation 1 and Revelation 5 where he said he made us kings and priests. The original said he made us A royal priesthood. A kingly priesthood. He made us a priesthood of kings. Okay? He made us a priesthood of kings. Okay? So that is more or less where we are. Out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Jesus is the light of the world. Now he says, you are the light of the world. You know, and your city is set on a hill and you cannot be hidden. Maybe I should just throw this in. 
There was a people who was God's people, who is no more God's people. There is a people who was not God's people, who is now God's people. And it all happened with Father Abraham, that many sons, many sons that Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just pray. Remember we were Sunday school? So God said to Abram, Abram, I give all these promises of in blessing I will bless you, in multiplying I will multiply you. Nothing will hurt you, nothing will harm you. No matter what they say about you, it will not touch you because I have decided to bless you. But sorry, Abram, this promise is for your seed. Although it was for Abram's seed, the Bible says, Abram multiplied greatly. He was very rich in gold, very rich in silver, very rich in cattle. Although the promise was for his seed. Going to Galatians, he says, when he talks about seed, he mentions it singular because he's talking about Christ. Verse 29 of Galatians 3 says, but if we are Christ's, Remember, into his marvelous light, in Christ, born again. Say, he says, but if we belong to Christ, then are we Abraham's seed, and then are we heirs according to the promise. So the people that proclaim they are Abram's children, not they, they say they are Abram's seed, are Abram's seed. Jesus said to the Jews in John 8, I can call seed for Abram out of these stones. But you are not the seed of Abram. He said, because if you were the seed of Abram, you would believe me because Abram believed me. They said, hey, you're not 50 years old. How can you say Abram? He said, man, Abram wished he saw my day and he saw it. Before Abram was, I am. So Galatians 3, 8 says, the gospel was first preached to Abraham. So Jesus said to the Jews of his time, you are not really Abram's seed. Because the seed only comes really after Christ. You are an example of what I could do. I had to have a people to show how I can bring my promises. But you were hard-headed, stiff-necked, rebellious. So the kingdom will be taken away from you and it'll be given to the people that'll bear the fruit thereof. So I'm going to take what you rejected, Christ Jesus, and make him the chief cornerstone of the new building, which we will call church, house of God, mountain of the Lord, city of the Lord, light of the world, bride of the lamb, wife of God. This is going to be the new group of people. And that's where people will come from all over the world to see the power of the glory. You can't go to a rabbi to find the power. You can't go to a rabbi to find the truth about Jesus Christ. They don't believe in him. If you want to find the power, the truth of the word, you've got to go to the church of Jesus Christ. Where he says in Matthew 14, 43, round about, where he says, uh, the righteous shall shine as the sun, you know. He says, but the people of the kingdom will be cast out. And other people will have the kingdom. Galatians 4, verse 10. You observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid lest I bestowed upon you labor in vain. Oh, this year, in the Feast of Tabernacles, I'm going to take all my elders to Israel. (laughs) Rabbi Portanovsky is going to sprinkle us with holy water. Now they are so blessed. Last year they showed on TV how the Christians and the Jews are taking hands. This is the opposite of what Paul did. He said, <laughs> Verse 22. It is written, Abram had two sons. It is written, he had two sons. The one was by a bond maid. The other by a free woman. It says more than the eye can see. He was of the bond woman, was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman by a promise. For those who know we're talking about a promise tonight. But these things are just an allegory. 
For these are two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage. So where did Moses get the law? Which is Hagar. Okay. Paul says the law is for Hagar. I thought the law was for Israel. Oh, but remember, the seed Christ has now come. Now those that were not a people are people, and those who were a people are not a people. Now things have changed. Hmm? So now he says, you know, that people from Mount Sinai, they are now in bondage. They are now eager, unless you want to read something. Verse 25 says in the message, it corresponds with what is now going on in Jerusalem. A slave life producing slaves as offspring. This is the way of Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. So it's not in the Sinai Peninsula. It's in Saudi Arabia. For those who did watch the History Channel and National Geographic where they found the real Mount Sinai. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with the children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, you've got to read Isaiah 54 to understand it. It's written, rejoice you barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry you that travail not. For the desolate which were the Gentile people, hath more children than she which hath a husband. It says to Israel, you, are, you have a husband, but you've forsaken your husband. Yeah. Talking about Israel over and over in the prophets. Now we, brethren, Paul writing to the Galatians, not to the, to the, to the Jerusalemites. <laughs> we, brethren, as Isaac was are the children of promise. 29, but as then he was born of the flesh, in other words, a man-made idea, persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Go read the book of Genesis. Even so, it is now. So there's a natural seed and a spiritual seed, a bond and a free. A man-made idea and a spiritual promise. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bond woman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Jerusalem countdown, biggest trash on earth. We are gathering money to get the Jews out of Russia back to Jerusalem. It's got nothing to do with Bible prophecy. You are busy with Hagar. You are busy helping Sarah with a bond made to get Ismail just like Abram did. And you'll pick up trouble because those people do not believe Christ. They crucified him. They don't honor the church. They think you're wicked. They call you a dog. Somebody needs to say it. I'm sorry. You don't have to worry. I said it. You didn't say it. I'm not cross-fed up or anything. I'm just, I just heart sore to think Christians would send their money to promote people that crucified Christ to regain their country where there's another people which is all over the world called Zion, the city of God. Paul says, Cast them out of the church. Did you know, did you know, did you know, did you know, did you know that you can go to the synagogue now and find out who Jesus is and they'll tell you he's a bastard. They will tell you he's a lying dog and a cheat because Messiah must still come. Now you want to pay for them to rebuild a temple? where we are already the temple, where Jesus already said, break down the temple, where Jesus already decided he will dwell in us and make us his abode. How can we go back to a natural thing if God has already instituted the spiritual? 
1 Corinthians 15 says, that which is spiritual was not first, but that which is natural. So God had Israel as a natural seed. As Abram had Ismail as a natural seed. But now he has the church as a spiritual seed. As Abram had Isaac and then Christ as a spiritual seed. When the temple was built by Solomon, for those who want to read Chronicles up to chapter 8 and 1 Kings up to chapter 11, when Solomon built his temple, the ark was no more gold. It had no more cherubims. It had no more pot of manna in it. It had no more staff of Aaron in it. It only was a wooden box with a law in it. So Solomon built cherubims on the walls, not over the mercy seat. He had just flat imprints on the wall. When Solomon built the most holy, it was not anymore like God said it to Moses. When they were taken captivity, this is in the Bible, it's not history, it's in the Bible. I read it here for you. When they were taken into Babylonian captivity for 70 years, the ark was taken captive too. What was left of it? When they returned from Babylonian captivity and rebuilt the temple, they rebuilt the Holy of Holies without the ark. So, they can't look for the ark now and says, when did it? It disappeared in Babylonian captivity. So the temple of Herod had no more ark. The temple of Solomon had a wooden box without the testimony. It shows you how far they were away from the true worship of God. It was a gimmick. They instituted Pharisees, Sadducees that was never in the Bible. They instituted a priesthood that had chief priests that was never instituted by God. They had synagogues that was never in the Old Testament. It was a man-made idea. That's why God says that Jerusalem of present is now natural Hagar slavery bondage. Mm. Antichrist. Sorry, they don't believe in Jesus, so they're anti-Christ. All other religions can get saved like this because they believe in Jesus. They believe Jesus came as a prophet. They believe. Most religions believe Jesus came. They don't believe him as Lord and God. But they all have Christmas. But the Jews don't. If you put emphasis on a nation, you're out of the world. There is no nation, but you that are Christians are a peculiar nation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. You were no people. You are now the people. You got to be in Christ. You got to be in the light. The light's got to be in you. Christ's got to be in you. You got to be born again. You must be born again. Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born again. We are God's children. What made you God's children? We are Jews. No, the Bible says, he that says he's a Jew is not a Jew. He says, and synagogues are of Satan, Revelation chapter 2. You can be here, Zulu, Twana, Kosa, German, English, France. You are not, you're not a Frenchman. You're a Christian. You can't boast on your status of who you come from. That's what I said. The Swazis and the Zulus, come out of your kingdom, man. Come into the kingdom of God and get blessed. We are in the kingdom of almighty God, man. It's not headed by an Afrikaner. It's not headed by a Frenchman. It's not headed by a Zulu or a Twana. It's headed by the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's why I don't care where you come from. She's from Madagascar. She's not a Malgasy. She's a Christian. She comes from Setswana. She's not a Tswana. She's a Christian. They cause us. No, they're not cause us. They're Christians. He's Venda. He's not Venda. He's a Christian. You're Afrikaner. You're not Afrikaner. You're a Christian. Hmm? You're English. You can't be English. You're a Christian. Yeah. We have the guy that built our church. He used to be a Jew. He says, please, I'm not a Jew. I'm a Christian. What I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to knock something. I could have just as well called any other nation. What I'm trying to say is when the Bible was written, it was between the Jews and the Christians. And Paul said, you've got to get your eyes off a national, geographical, ethnical group in the Middle East. You've got to decide the mountain of the Lord is wherever people serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've got to place a higher standard. Why go back to a place where they crucified him? Go to a place where he's resurrected in heaven. Genesis 15, you know, God said to Abram, your seed is going to be blessed, Abram. Abram said, can't be, I'm old and I've got no child. God says, get out of your tent. Get out of your circumstances. The only thing that's in the tent is Sarah. And she doesn't look good right now. <laughs> she, will, she, will not really, she will not really inspire you to have an Isaac. But please, forgive me. Abram, get out of your tent. Look up to heaven. What do you see? Stars. He says, can you count them? He says, now that's how your seed will be. Stars. Abram believed and was counted in for righteousness. When he believed, his seed shall be stars. Now we're talking spiritual, not natural. It was counted in for righteousness. In other words, if we believe through the crucified Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, we are now righteous. We are stars. So if Abram believed there's going to be stars, it was counted as righteous. If we believe we are righteous, we are counted as stars. Staticky. You're a star. The years passed, Sarah got older and so did Abram. So Sarah came and said, I've got a bond maid, Hagar, that cleans the dishes and makes the beds. Maybe you should try her. Ismail was born. The minute Abram went into Hagar's tent, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to Abram, said, now your seed shall be as the sand of the seashore and stars of heaven. Okay? In other words, the one is above stars. The one is beneath sand. The Jerusalem at present. But we are from Jerusalem. Did you got it? We're going to get deeper into it right now, all right? So God, now he says, it is written he had two sons, all right? Genesis 22, God says, Abram, now Isaac is born in between. Now, Ismael is about 15, 16, 17. Isaac is about 12. The word of the Lord came to Abram. He said, Abram, take your son, your only son, and offer him on the mountain. So Abram, the Bible says, took his son, his only son. And they went up. And the, Sarah said, where are you going? He said, we're going to go to the mountain of the Lord. To worship him. Not to offer. We're going to worship him on the mountain. So they go on the mountain. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and seek his faith. Isaac said, dead. 
here's wood, here's fire. Where's the sacrifice? He says, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. Behold the Lamb of God. God so loved the world that He gave His Son, His only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in Him should. God will provide the Lamb, my son. So Abraham prophesied the promise of the seed in which the promise will come. My son, God will provide the Lamb that will bring the seed that will have the promise of multiplication, prosperity, peace and joy and happiness. Hey, but dad, why do you tie me down? And an angel spoke. And Abram turned around and he saw a ram. Not a lamb. A ram. Not a lamb. A ram. With his horns caught up in a tree. And God spoke. Abram, because you did not withhold your son, your only son. You must check it, Genesis 20. Therefore, your seed shall be as the stars of heaven. Comma, and like the sand of the sea. So Abram, there's going to be these two seeds. Deuteronomy 1 verse 10, it says the following. Moses speaks, says, you are now all the stars of heaven. That's when they left Egypt when they came into the wilderness, the first thing that Moses addressed them, Deuteronomy 1, is that sequence of stuff that happened from the day they left till the day they entered. Okay? From the day they left till when Moses had to go up the mountain and die. Remember? The whole Deuteronomy. So, Deuteronomy 1 verse 10, they just exited Egypt and they just entered on their way to the promised land. And Moses said, you are today all stars of heaven. Deuteronomy 28, he says, if you listen to my word and stick to it, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed your basket, blessed this, blessed, 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 blessed. But from verse 15, if you do not stay in my word and do what I say, you will be cursed. You'll be cursed coming in, cursed going out. You'll be so cursed that all sicknesses that's not even written in the book will get you. Sicknesses will overtake you. Curses will overtake you. He says, and by the way, verse 62 of Deuteronomy 28. As you were as stars, you will not be anymore. Okay? Chapter 1, you're all stars. Chapter 28, because you are rebellious and you will not listen, you were as stars. In other words, what will you become? So I saw... A star fall from heaven. Deuteronomy 9. Paul says, my desire, my heart's desire is for, for, for Israel to be saved. But, says verse 27, but they are now all the sand of the seashore. Romans chapter 9 verse 27. As from verse 1, Paul says, my desire is that they will be saved. Verse 27, but they are now the sand of the sea. Why? Because God, they rejected Jesus, the morning star, the light of the world. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And to them he said, you are now the light of the world. I have brought you out of darkness, out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay, we are a royal priesthood. We are a royal holy nation. We were not the people, we are now the people. Hmm? Exodus 19. Epra se cobra naste, shelere cobro solomangele azubra. Verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob and to the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. And brought you unto myself. You shall mount up with wings. I brought you on eagle's wings. In other words, I took you higher. Unto myself. Come unto the mountain. 
Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure above all, above all people, for the earth is mine. Are you ready to shout? And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called the elders of the people and laid before them, for their faces, all these words which the Lord commanded them. And the people, and, and God, Moses returned the words of the people to the Lord. And the Lord came in a thick cloud. And Moses told the words. Acts chapter 7, they stoned Stephen, the deacon that had great power whose face shone like an angel when they stoned him. And he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Why did they stone Stephen? Because he said stuff, blasphemous, according to them, against Moses. He preached like I'm preaching tonight. He said, he said, Moses received living words. Now remember, oracles is words, yes. So remember, remember that Second Corinthians three says the law kills. The letter is dead, but the spirit makes life. Jesus said it himself in John six sixty three. Uh, Paul says it in Second Corinthians chapter three. All right. But Moses received living words, and they rejected it. So Galatians 3 says, but the law was added because of transgressions. So God didn't call Moses and gave him the law. He called Moses and gave him living, said, go tell the people. They are a peculiar people. They are a holy nation. They are a royal priesthood. The exact same sentence as 1 Peter 2 verse 5. Living words. Moses, let's go to the mountain of the Lord. So a thick cloud came on the mountain. And Moses went into the cloud. Bam, bada, bam, bam, bam. And God says, go tell them. They're peculiar people. They're a holy nation. They're a kingdom of priests. They are my people. I'm going to put them above all the other people on the face of the earth. You're talking about the church now, man. Okay. Are you with a one day, thousand, thousand, one day, seven days since creation, third day since Jesus? Let's read on. Tell them to be ready because on the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people on this mountain. Hmm. Are you there? Verse 18 of chapter 20. And all the people saw the thunderings, the lightnings, the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. That's all they can smoke. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Verse 19, and they said unto Moses, speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak to us anymore, lest we die. God just gave them living words. Said, you are a peculiar people. You are a holy nation. You are a kingdom of priests. The mountain shook. And God said, tell the people not to come and touch the mountain. Because if they touch the mountain, like, people say, hey Moses, come down. So Moses came down the mountain to the people. Tell God we don't want to hear him anymore. We'd rather listen to you, but we don't want to listen to God. I mean, let him take his royal priesthood. Let him take his holy nation. Let him take his kingdom of priests. Let him take the stuff. We'd rather just stay here on earth and be the rebellious, stubborn, hard-headed, stiff-necked people. Hmm? And Moses said to the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you. And that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. 24 verse 16. And the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, on the mountain. And the cloud covered it for six days. 
And on the seventh day, he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Moses, tell the people to sanctify themselves. Get themselves ready. Because on the third day, I want to come down on the mountain. Glory cover the mountain. After six days, on the seventh day, God said, Moses, come up. So on the seventh day, Moses went to the mountain of the Lord. And he saw him face to face. Lord, show me your glory. Right, Moses, come stand here in the rock. And I'm going to pass by you. And I'll show you all my glory, Moses. Oh, Lord, if you don't go with us, let us, Moses, my presence will go with you. Moses, you'll be different from all the other people because my presence, my miracle signs and wonders will prove that you are different. I will work in your midst signs, wonders. That will be the proof that you're different above all the other people that are below. They will see you because there will be miracles. There will be fire burning in your holy of holies. There will be bread falling from heaven. There will be mead falling from Moses, I'm going to open the seas. I'm going to open the rivers. I'm going to cleave the rock for you. Man, I'm going to do miracles. And people say, Woo! What is that attraction on the mountain? What are those people that can't be hidden? Come on, man. Come on, man. Rahab said to Joshua's people that came to spy the land in Joshua too, our whole nation shakes because we heard that the presence of God is constantly with you and we are afraid of you. It's time that the world take note of the church of Jesus Christ. Not to mock us, not to advertise. They must come with, met with honor and with fear and say, can we write about the miracles? And they must not try and prove the wrong. They must say, we fear your God. But because there's such a mixture of Israel in the church, how can the church be the church if they want to stay in the old, if they want to stay with the natural, if they want to stay with the carnal, if they want to stay with the rebellious people? It's time to let the bond woman go and serve God. Verse 29, chapter 34. And it came to pass when Moses, Moses came down from the mountain with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down, Moses did not know that the skin of his face was shining while he talked with him. Second Corinthians chapter 3 says, If the glory was so great in the Old Testament when Moses received the letter that killed, how much greater glory we who are now ministers of the new of the spirit we are not of the law we are of the spirit we are not of the letter that kill we are of the spirit that make alive we are the people of grace mercy a peculiar people a holy nation a kingdom of priests God's chosen people Washed in the blood of the Lamb. A city on a mountain. The light of the world. And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John and brought them up on a high mountain. And he was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. It's time to receive and believe your inheritance. You are combined, one, united with the Son of Righteousness. Shine, shine. Your day has come to bring liberation to people in bondage. Let your light shine people of God mm. 
And behold, there appeared Moses. <laughs> First Moses went up and God appeared. Now God appeared. Now God appeared and Moses went up. Okay, Moses went up and God appeared. Now God went up and Moses appeared. <laughs> Moses' face shine, now God's face shine. As a sun, sun is a star. Your seed will be like the stars of heaven. Oh God, our God, Psalm 8, how excellent is your name above the earth. So you've got to get above the earth to find the excellency of his name. What's above the earth? Heaven. As heaven is higher than earth, my ways, my thoughts are higher than your ways and thoughts. So change your ways and your thoughts and get my thoughts. Yeah. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Get God's thoughts. Okay. Philippians 2.15 says, you must shine your light by holding forth the word of God. Okay. So let's just go on. Where were we? Oh God, our God, our excellence, your name. If I behold the sun, the moon, if I look at the stars, what is man? Abram, get out of your tent, look at the stars. So shall she be. If I look at the stars, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, in brackets my own words, to make him stars. To shine so that everybody can see. You have crowned him with glory and with honor. And you have set him over the work of your hands to have dominion, to rule, to have power. And while he yet spoke, okay, a bright cloud, verse 5, overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud. Remember when we read Second Peter? We were on the mountain with him when we heard this voice. It's not a fable when we talk about the power of God. Remember I told you we're going to come back to it. Now here's the scripture that, that Peter refers to in his second epistle. He says, there came a voice. This is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Remember, Peter said it. And when the disciples heard it. They fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came, touched him, and said, Arise and be not afraid. Okay? And when they came to the multitude down the mountain, if you read Luke 9 and Mark 9, it says, When they came down the mountain. Okay? And when they came to the multitude down the mountain, hmm? yeah. listen, if you read Mark and Luke, it says, uh, The disciples were busy trying to cast a demon out of a little boy. And when Jesus came down the mountain, the Father came to Jesus. Now, let's read it now in Matthew. There came a certain man kneeling down and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. We did say it in the beginning, okay? For he is a lunatic. Man <laughs> chaslan. <laughs> the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. He sore vexed for oftentimes he fall in the fire and oftentimes, and in Luke it says, the devil throws him in the fire and the devil throws him in the water. I brought him to your disciples. They could not cure him. Then Jesus answered, you faithless, perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked the devil. He departed out of him. Then came the disciples and said, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence yonder, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible to you. When did Jesus have this discourse Casting out the devil and talking to his disciples about nothing being impossible. When he came down the mountain. What happened in the mountain? His face shone and he was transfigured. And Peter says, that is the power of God. And it's no fable. We were there. We saw it. Right? Matthew 8. Jesus had ended his sayings. The people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. If you go to Luke, it says they would say, his word is with power. Now verse 8, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will. When Jesus came down the mountain, 
The father said, I had my child with your disciples all day long. He said, come out. Jesus came down the mountain. Here comes his leper. He said, if you will. She said, I will. I will, man. I will, man. I will, man. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see, you tell it to no man, but go the way, show yourself to the priest and offer a gift that Moses command for a testament of them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, remember, on his way from the mountain, they came unto him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grief tormented. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the centurion said, speak the word only. Verse 10, Jesus said, so great faith that I have not seen no in the whole land of Israel. Verse 12, he says, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. And they shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way. As you have believed, so be it done unto you. And his servant was healed at that same hour. And when Jesus was come, he's still coming from the mountain. And this is what's happening all the same day. And Jesus coming to Peter's house. He saw his wife's mother sick, laid sick in the fever. He touched her hand, the fever left her. He rose and ministered unto them. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many. It's all the same day. When many were possessed with devils, he cast out the devils. And he healed all that were sick. Great multitudes followed him. Let's go to chapter 15, 29. And Jesus departed from thence and came near into the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat there. And great multitudes came to him, having the lame, the blind, the dumb, the maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. And he healed them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. And Jesus said, I have compassion on the multitude. So uh, you can go read Luke, you can go read Mark, you can go read John, and you'll see every time when Jesus went up the mountain when he came down, there was immediately a release of power. So Peter says, when we were with him on this mountain, where he was transfigured and his face changed and shined like the sun. He said, this is not a fable because we're trying to reveal to you the power of God. So Peter says, there's a mountain type of experience that we need to get. So Jesus said, you are the light. You are the city. You are on a mountain. You cannot be hidden. But you know, we have a church full of secret agents. In hiding. In hiding, yes. Sunday they Christians, Monday they hooligans. Sunday they Christians, Monday they electricians in motor mechanics. No, 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 no. I'm a Christian doing a motor mechanic job. I'm a Christian doing electrician job. I'm not an electrician being a Christian. I'm a Christian doing an electrician job. So wherever I go, I'm a Christian doing this, I'm a Christian doing that, I'm an ambassador for Christ, I'm a city, at my working place, they need to see me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was working with two professors in Pochester, 1975, 76, 77, designing geophysical instruments to, to get the trace elements for gold and stuff like cesium, thorium, borium, uranium, stuff like that. Gamma ray stuff. Huh? And I got saved just before I started working with these professors. Professor Mayer and Professor Grunewald and stuff like that. So working for them for a few months, the one professor came to me and said, do you want to be a preacher or do you want to design instruments? I said, both. He said, well, you know, you're bothering us. I said, why should I bother you? He said, we feel uneasy in your presence. I said, why would you feel uneasy in my presence? He says, we just feel, you know, we feel, you know, see what? See, we feel like sinners. 
I said, so what are you? He said, ek is a doper. <laughs> you all not understand it. He said, I am reformed. Because the university was then a church university for the reformed church in South Africa, where now it's just the University of the Northwest. They threw Christ out. Okay. So he said, you want to be a preacher? I said, I'd love to. He said, but then you can't work for me. I said, okay, I'll do you a bargain. I'll go study to be a reverend. And then I work for you three days a week, and two days a week I study. <sighs> yeah, okay, it's fine. So I went to the University of Poitiers Trim, and I enrolled to, do, uh, to study for a reverend in the Dutch Reformed Church. <laughs> true, true, true. 1976. 1976. So I enrolled for my BA admission degree to become a reverend in the Dutch Reformed Church. So I was there a few months. <laughs> they irritated me and I irritated them. I was above, they was beneath. They talked about the stuff that happened last night. I talked about the stuff that happened in the Crusades, you know. So I decided to walk out. So I was sitting in, this, in the Hebrew class. Professor Erasmus was teaching us and he, you know, every now and then he just lit his pipe and, and they put it down and, and then went on with biblical Hebrew, you know. So, lieve Heere, moet ek so prede kan word. The students in my class, 31 of them, all talked about how they were drunk last night, how they did this. They, they're going to be the future dominies of the Dutch Reformed Church. No joke. No joke. The, the biggest proud for them was how drunk they could get and how wicked they could be and the professors all smoked so I decided I'm gonna I didn't even take my suitcase with I left it with all my books in the class I just got up it was time to have a break the, the period that we had was a long period so we had a break in between an hour and an hour so in between the break I said Prof Rasi cheers toilet. so I walked out I never came back so I went to the place where I worked with Professor Mayer. I entered there and this guy was furious. He said, I had the boss's year of general mining, which is now Anglo Gold or something. I had them here and, you know, and there, there was some of these machines that I had to, you know, show them what they can do. And you were not here and, you know, I didn't know what you did here, so I couldn't show this to them. And I think you must go. I said, oh, I just left the university too, so <laughs> let's go here too. And that's how I left the job. You're not an engineer first. You're not a designer first. You do that, but you're a Christian. They need to see you. They need to take note of you. I tell you, I was in that university not two days. And every one of those 31 students know exactly who I am. They avoided me. Because on the way from the one class to the other class, I spoke in tongues. They took a smoke period from one class to another. I didn't say who I was. They knew who I was. I started working for another company for 16 months in electronics. After 16 months, the general manager of the company came from Johannesburg. He said, I think you need to resign. You're one of our better managers in the country. There's something like 200 branches. I said, you are one of our better managers. But we can't take this preaching all the time. Your branch is doing the best of all the branches. But your preaching is irritating us. You're getting to us. I resigned. A week later, I was studying for a pastor. Okay, I, I want to tell you, you can shine. Yeah. Verse 18. For you are not come to a mountain that might be touched and that burnt with fire. 
nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded in so much that as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through with a dog. So terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to the God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new testament, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel. Whoa! And this word for 27, once more signifieth, God will remove those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about that glory of Moses and the glory of the New Testament, the Christ. The one was the law, the one is the grace. The one is the old, the one is the new. The one is the letter, the one is the spirit. The one is bondage, the one is liberty. It's all words that's in that place. Okay. Chapter 4. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. For the God of this world has blinded the believers' minds. Chapter 3, verse 14. Their minds are blinded if they read the law. Chapter 4. The God of this world blinded their minds. Chapter 3, verse 14. Their minds are blinded when they read the law. So who's the God of which world? The law is the God of the Jewish world. Let's read on. So that they should not discern the truth, preventing them from seeing the illuminating light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of the likeness of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness has now shone in our hearts. The day star will arise in your heart. Morning star. The light for the illumination of the knowledge of the majesty, the glory of God, as it is manifest in the person, in the face of Jesus Christ. However, we possess this precious treasure the divine light of the gospel inside earthen vessels so that the grandeur and the exceeding greatness of the power may be shown to be from God and not from ourselves. The message was the power of God. Peter says, when we talk to you about this mountain thing, it's not a fable because we're trying to tell you about the power. Amen. Every time Jesus went on the mountain, he came back power. Yes. Healing sick, cleansing lepers. Every time he came down the mountain, power. Moses, on the third day and on the seventh day. Peter, John, James, come. Let's go to the mountain on the seventh day. Now we are entering in thousand years, the seventh day. We are entering in thousand years, the third day. So uh, we are entering the day when if we go to the mountain, he will come down on the mountain. In other words, there will be phosphorus. There will be light touching light. There will be an illuminating where the day star will arise in our hearts. And we will have the grandeur, the exceeding greatness the excellency of the power of God right here inside of us. So I will be able to touch the sick and they'll be healed. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, stop the storms. 